Namaste beautiful yogis. I designed Tintrava Yoga as a holistic system for mind, body and heart that combines ancient spiritual yoga teachings with high intensity interval training that will get you in the best shape of your life. I have thousands of testimonies from people that have done and followed my classes for years. Come on to my website and read through them. They're extremely inspiring. On my membership I have 400 classes and right now I'm adding a three month beginner program that can get you into the more advanced classes. I'm also a brand new mom, so I'm offering a lot of tools for new moms, how they can lose weight, get back in shape, feel positive. My membership is the best offer out there on the internet because it offers you classes for every occasion. So come on over to my website, sign up for my membership, and I'll see you on the mat. Namaste. Namaste beautiful yogis, my name is Ali and today we're doing yoga for winter depression also known as seasonal affective disorder or SAD and we'll focus on breathing, improving the chi, the flow of energy and also we'll focus on some back bends, chest openers and we'll have some pranayama. Let's begin in the front of the mat roll the shoulders a few times backwards so we're starting to introduce movement beginning to deepen your breath inhaling through the nose exhaling through the nose and with each inhalation deepen the breath a little more let's roll forward Breath is allowing us to increase how much prana we can access, we can intake, which is vital energy. So improving our breath improves our energy, of course. And that's already proven by science as well. Great, the next one we're going to clap our hands in front and then behind, keep them low. Just swing your arms around. Great. From here, we're going to inhale the hands over the head and we're going to grab right underneath the elbow. Press your feet down and make sure that the outer edges of your feet are parallel to each other from here. Keeping everything in the same plane will reach over to the left and we're going to lift with the left arm so that we're lifting the right arm away from the hip basically. Lengthening the torso, keep the elbows back back to center opposite side press the right elbow back lift length and keep pressing the elbow back lifting with the hand you will feel it all through your torso really great for digestion great back to center exhale the hands behind you interlacing the fingers open the chest look up big breath in release let's bring the hands behind the head without turning on the without pulling on the head just glide your fingers up and press your elbows back so that there is length in the back of the head the back of the neck open the chest press the elbows back and really lift to the heart as if you're trying to project your heart up and bring it up towards the ceiling lift 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 energetic lift here and release from here keep your hands behind your head bend the knees straight back lower down halfway engaging the lower back and the core come back up one more time really straight back no curving 
you may not want to go all the way to parallel to the floor, just parallel to the floor, you might want to be halfway up, whatever you need to, just to keep your back straight, great, release the hands, bring them over the knees, press the hands into the knees, and straighten, lengthen the back, great, from here, lower further down, and let's wrap the wrist around the elbows, let your head hang heavy, shake your head, look over to one side, over to the other, arms are heavy, let's swing them side to side, the torso is swinging left to right, the muscles are relaxed, no tension anywhere in the upper body, the jaw is relaxed, eye gaze softening, turn off the palate, Great, release the hands down on the ground, spread the fingers wide open, press into your base of the palm of the hand, base of each finger, press into your thumb, activating the shoulders and step into plank. Pressing into your heels, pull the belly in, activating the core, awakening the core. Really feel the strength of this pose, feeling how your body is awakening here and feeling the core connecting the upper and lower body. Your midsection is on fire, the midsection also corresponds to second, third chakra, self value willpower, drive, self-worth, shoulders are relaxed yet strong, without tension with great power and strength, lower down into chaturanga, you can do chaturanga from your knees, upward facing dog, press all five toes down, into your mat, open here, lengthen the entire back, lower back is lengthening, the neck is lengthening, and lower down Chaturanga, exhale downward facing dog, lifting the tailbone as high as possible, awareness of your hands, pull the belly, in, Mula Bandha is active, Udhyana Bandha is active, Udhyana Bandha is the lock or the lock uh, in your belly, which is very well easily achieved in Dando. Inhale the right leg up, open the right hip on top of the left, bend the knee and lift, lift, lift as high as you can here. Keep the shoulders aligned, look between your hands, come on to the tippy toes and lift, lift, lift. Great, square the hips, bring your knee to the nose, one, two, three, four, five, keep your knee to the nose, shift your shoulders forward, coming into plank, step your foot between the hands, come up, high lunge, exhale the hands behind, interlacing the fingers, opening the chest, softening the chest as you open it, let's glide the hands down the left leg, walk, back, exhale slowly begin to lower down, humble warrior press back into your heel,
Now exhale both hands on the inside of the right foot, press the back heel further, walk the back heel further away from you for a stretch here, the hips, release of the hips, pose, we're releasing the hips, the tension in the hips, the stuckness, step it back, plank, really strong core, feel it as you lower down in chaturanga, sometimes you need to do chaturanga from your knees in order to strengthen the body, chaturanga is a core pose, it's not so much an upper body pose, as much as it is a core pose, open, upward facing dog, exhale, chaturanga downward facing dog, Really beautiful breath, soften your breath as you deepen it, look under the right shoulder, under the left shoulder, softening the jaw, softening the airways, air passages, let's inhale the left leg, lift it and open the hip on top of the right hip, lengthening, look between your hands, come on to the tippy toes, lift, 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 lift as high as you can, Let's square the hips, lower the back heel down, bring the knee to the nose, one, extend the leg, two, pull the belly in, extend the leg, three, four, five, hold, shift forward, shifting the shoulders over the wrists, look between your hands, step into high lunge, Pressing into the back heel, exhale the hands behind, shifting, changing the dominant finger under, changing the clasp open here, lining the hands down. And begin to lower. Pressing into the back heel, humble warrior, softening the shoulders. Exhale, both hands on the inside of the left foot, walk your right foot back, hold here, releasing the hips. Step it back. Plank. Really strong plank. Plank is where you're going to begin to strengthen your core no matter what level you're at. Plank is your most important pose. Even if you're advanced, for a beginner, that's the best pose to practice for all beginners. All right, Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Widen the upper back. Chaturanga, exhale down dog, inhale the right leg up, open the hip, lift, lifting through the knee, Inner elbows facing each other here. And here you can walk your left hand further out and take the right hand off the floor, maybe grabbing the ankle. If not, just step the hand off the floor. Great. Walk your hands to the front, square the hips, come into one-legged plank and let's bring the knee between the elbows. One, two, three, four, five. 
round the back, step it drop, drop the back heel down, come up warrior one. Here the hips are facing forward. Open the arms out to the sides, rotate, twisting to the right, bring the right hand down the left leg, left arm up. Tracing, glaze towards your fingertips. Coming out of this, exhale the hands behind, clasping, lower the chest over the right thigh, shifting forward onto the right foot and transitioning into warrior three with a clasp. Hold it. Let's bring the left hand down, right arm up, revolving, half moon. Exhale, both hands on the ground and bring your right hand around the ankle, straighten into standing half splits and see if you can take the left arm, left hand off the floor and around the ankle. Balancing pose is really right for your, for your mind, for your mental health. They bring you into the present moment where everything is always, where the truth lies. Things are better in the present moment. From here, square the hips and slowly come up to standing again where exercising the balance in mind and bring your knee into your rib cage draw a few circles with your toes bring your right hand to your foot straighten the leg left arm back and begin to turn back towards your left hand From here, bending the knee, let's bring the ankle over the right knee. You can grab the flesh on the left leg and glide it out so that the hip is opening, the muscle is softening. Booty back. And we can lower the hands down here on the ground. Bring your shin bone onto your triceps as high as you can and take the leg either slightly off the floor or completely off the floor and step back into plank spread the fingers wide open pull the belly in lower down chaturanga upward facing dog widen the upper back you see how this is a magical magic trick here back to chaturanga Exhale, down facing dog. Mudiana Banda, which is somewhat like a stomach vacuum, hollowing the belly. Pulling the navel towards the spine here. Inhale the left leg up, open the hip, lift, 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 soften, lift, easy breath. From here, look towards your right hand and walk it out, maybe outside of the mat for balancing purposes. See if you can tap the left hand off the floor and that might be as far as you want to go here or you can grab your ankle and balance here. Great. Let's bring both hands to the front of the mat. Square the hips. Bring your knee into your rib cage. Shift your shoulders over the wrists. Bring your knee between your elbows. Press the back heel away from you. Let's go. Two. Three. 
four, five, hold, round the back, pull them in, step it through. Drop the back heel down, press into the outer edge of the back foot, come up, warrior one. So the right hip is internally rotating here, facing forward, micro bend in the knees recommended for people with hypermobility in the joints. Open the arms out, twist to your left, drop the left hand down the way, reach with your right arm up, look up, lengthen, fingertips are lengthen, lengthening away from the hip flexor here, and you will feel that stretch. Look up towards the fingertips, twist a little more. Beautiful. Exhale the hands behind you, interlacing the fingers, reversing the clasp so the dominant finger is under. One more time, so that the mind is vigilant. We're not falling into patterns, muscular patterns, movement patterns. We're stepping outside of the pattern. And with the knee bent, lower the chest over the thigh and begin to you're going to anchor yourself with your gaze. Look at the floor, anchor your, yourself. Your balance will be determined by this. And warrior two, hold it. From here slowly, coming up to standing, knee to the ribcage, you can draw a few circles with your toes and grab your foot. Now you don't have to completely straighten the leg, it can be halfway or if this is impossible. Hold your knee with the opposite hand, open the right arm behind you and when you're ready, you can trace it. out of this we're going to bring the leg behind us and level the chest to the floor right hand on the ground when you're ready bring the left arm up level the hips and if you can walk up both hands on the floor and standing half splits let's take one hand off the floor and whenever you're ready you can work the other hand off the floor now for many of you you can just tap your foot off the floor and work on this balance it can be difficult even on that level balancing in general is challenging great bend the left knee Reversing the order here for the mind. So the mind is always vigilant. Now we bring the ankle over the knee. Good, sit it back, push the booty back, kind of like in a squat. You really want to pop the booty. And you can glide the flesh out, which will soften your hip. Great, lower the hands down and work your shin bone high onto your triceps once you have that you can tap the foot off the floor or straighten it and step it back in plank pull the belly in chaturanga oh, poor dog chaturanga downward dog spread the fingers wide open press into the base Let's bring the left hand in the center of the mat, right hand to the left ankle, look underneath 
your left shoulder, reverse it, right hand in the center of the mat, spread the fingers wide open, left hand to the ankle, look underneath the shoulder, lifting the tailbone, all right, back to down dog. Inhale the right leg up and open the hip. This time we're going to go into wild thing and step the foot behind us. And lift the hips as high as you can. Chest is opening towards the front of the room. Great. Coming out of this. Step the foot between the hands, drop the back heel down, and we're gonna window the hands in warrior two. Windmill the hands back, reversing the warrior, and forward in side angle, and back. Inhale, exhale, lowering side angle. Inhale, reverse the warrior, exhale. That's three, let's go for Two more, four. Five. And hold side angle. Externally rotating the left hip. Let's bring both hands on the inside of the right foot. Turn the back heel up. And here, we're going to take a little wider alignment so push up alignment and do a push up with the knee tuck press the foot out and one more time great coming up plank pull the belly in all right really strong chaturanga either knees on the floor or knees on the floor if you can upper dog widening the mid and upper back chaturanga Exhale, down dog. Spread the fingers wide open, pull the belly in and up. Take the left leg up, open the hip. Step the foot behind. Wild thing, really opening the chest here, opening the hips, lifting the hips, extending the tailbone. Coming out of this, one leg is down dog, step the foot between the hands, drop the back heel down, we nail the hands into warrior two. Let's reverse it, side angle, inhale up, exhale down, inhale up, Exhale down, inhale up, exhale down, last one, inhale up, let's bring both hands on the floor, push up alignment, Lower down knee, extend the left knee, and plank. Chaturanga, hold it. Upward dog, hold it. Chaturanga. Exhale, down facing dog. Adu Mukha Svanasana. Let's take the right leg up. Bring the right hand into the center of the mat and work the left hand off the floor onto your tailbone. Bend the knee and try to find your foot. Focus on 
focus on the floor, on the drishti point. Great, release it. Let's do the opposite side. Left leg. Bending the knee. Hand down to the tailbone. Hand down to the ankle. Alright, good. Release. Let's go right leg one more time. Open the hip. Wow, thing. Really open the hips as high as you can, chest as open as you can. Side plank, awakening the core more and more through the class. Great, three poses in side plank. Grab your big toe with your right hand, open here. Glide your hand to the front, step the foot at the front, and we're going to drop the back heel down and open in warrior two one more time. Reverse it, straighten the leg, reach further back, coming out of this triangle pose, reaching ahead of you, lower down. Externally rotating the left hip, reaching over the head here, palm of the hand turns down, look down, one more balancing pose, bring the right hand on the floor, half moon pose, flexing the foot, looking up towards the hand, lengthening the rib cage, opening the rib cage, lengthening the torso, the spine. Bend the right knee, step it right back into warrior two. Hold the warrior two. Straightening the legs. We're going to face the long side of the mat, take plie. Hands onto the thighs, hollow the belly in a vacuum, stomach vacuum. So inhale and as you exhale, hollow the belly. Coming out of this, we'll reach side to side, steady the hips, only the upper body is moving. We nail the hands to the floor. Turn the back heel up and let's walk the hands a little further back on the inside of the right leg. Keep the knee bent, feeling this openness in the quadriceps, hip flexors, hips, hamstrings. Great. Plank. Chaturanga. Upward dog. Chaturanga, downward dog, take the left leg up, open the hip, drop it behind, wild thing, give me your best wild thing, really lift the hips, lengthen the tailbone, feel as if someone is pushing your heart, chakra or heart center from the back, not from the front, from the Back lifting your chest here, opening. Side plank. Three pose. Grab your big toe and walk your foot to the front. Drop the back heel down and nail the hands into warrior two. Good. 
Let's reverse it, walking the right hand down the right leg, really lifting here from the hip into the fingertips. There is an energetic line. Opening the rib cage. Straightening the leg, reaching further up, coming out, lengthen, and open that hip. Rotate the hip out, lower down. The elbow is elongated, elongating the tailbone. Reaching all over the head. You can go down here, bend the knee and transition into half moon. Stacking the hips on top of each other, hands reaching away from each other, opening the chest whenever you're ready. You can flex the foot, look to the front of the room or to the side in this case and up. Straightening the leg and taking plie one more time. Here we're going to do breath of fire. So effective, so effective for different mood disorders, especially when it's due to circumstances such as lack of light. That's very treatable when there is a causing factor. From here, we're gonna breathe only through the nose and we'll have the hands help us. You bring the hands as you exhale through the nose this time. Sometimes we do it through the mouth. It depends what we're targeting. And it will look like this. And that will flush the system and it will bring oxygen into the system. Let's, let's begin. It gets easier as we go. Take a few nice breaths. And one more time. Great, let's reach side to side here, elongating the torso again. From here, bring your hands on the inside of the left foot, walk the right foot back, keep the knee bent. Step it back, a really strong plank, chaturanga, upward dog, chaturanga, downward dog. Inhale the right leg up, open the hip, drop it behind into wild thing and maybe into wheel. Really lifting the hips. You can imagine two blossoming flowers 
big flowers such as roses, lotuses on each side of the hip and imagine them blossoming, opening here. The hips are opening and same, an even bigger flower in the heart area, opening, blossoming, opening the chest. Visualization is a real strong tactic in physical performance actually and in affecting the mind. Great, coming out of this one like a down dog. Lower down in pigeon. You can twist side to side here, flex the foot. Keep that hip down as you twist and lower down. Now you can imagine river flowing through your hips, especially if you feel anything stuck, sticky, resistant in the hip area. Imagine the river, crystal water flowing through the hips and flushing the debris, the sand out until there was just pure water flowing. See the quality of the water, the color of the water, the mood of the water. Is it fast? Chirpy, playful, is it turquoise, crystal blue, crystal green, clear, it has to be a pure color, nothing muddy, crystal color. Lifting the rib cage away from the hips. Inhale, coming up. Here, bring your hands in front of you and walk your hip bones towards your heel. Let's reach back and grab the ankle, right hand to left. This is going to deepen that hip flexor stretch. And you can bring now same side hand, left hand, left ankle. You can grab the toes and open here and back into downward facing dog. Circle the knee. Step it back. Take the left leg up and open the hip. And here you can begin to prepare the right hand. You can open it out to the right so that it can spin further back once we are in wild thing. And from here you'll spin the hand into wheel. Really lifting, elongating opening the chest. Again, you can come back to that flower visualization, blossoming flower. Flowers in their peak. Peak of the day, which means sun. Opening, we're receptive to the sunlight, it is less sunlight, usually during the winter months, 
So we are more, we have to be more open to it, to absorb more of it. And coming out of it, one legged down dog, pigeon, flex the foot, lifting the ribcage away from your feet, twist. When you twist to your right here, keep the hip down. You can lower it down, lift cage, uh, rib cage lift it. Crystal water flowing through the hips, cleansing and allowing for less resistance in the hip area for softness, fluidity, yet we always build strength in the hips. Um, I'm doing my hip strength building classes next. You can search it on my channel, Hip Strength. Um, and they're perfect, perfect coupling for or perfect pair for this class. We want to build both flexibility and strength in the hips. Uh, the strength part is also extremely important. We want to balance it. Also, we have hip balancing classes. You can do those too. So I encourage you to rotate the classes. They are very good complement to each other, my classes. I have schedules on my website, you can come for the schedules. We have membership schedules and often open to everyone's schedules as well. hips toward your foot and bring gently bring the foot in towards you so that we can stretch the quadriceps the hip flexors extending the tailbone down and you can change hands here And circle the knee one legged down dog. Step it down. You can shift your hips side to side here. Let's drop the knees on the ground, sit between your heels and lower down if that feels comfortable. You can lower all the way on your back or just stay here. Try not to open the knees and try not to lift the knees off the ground. Keep them down and I'd rather you do a less advanced pose but well aligned than something that's pushing you too hard and too ahead of where the body wants to be. The whole point of yoga is to develop mindfulness and awareness of the body and acceptance. So 
ambition in yoga kind of goes against the core teachings of yoga, which is basically we do all of this to connect more to our higher truth, to higher consciousness, to connect to the divine, to connect to universal love, and there are steps towards that. Physical steps such as mindfulness, awareness, breathing, uh, bandhas, compassion, then goes into the next levels of practices outside of the mat, uh, compassion is one of them, of course, and mindfulness through the day, um, awareness of others. And from self-awareness, it becomes letting go of the self, becoming more present and in tune with the universe and with everything around us rather than just focusing on the internal self. So it's, it's a two-step process. First, becoming very in tune so that we can let go of that. But we can let go of something we don't know. So we have to know it well. We have to befriend ourselves. Be very, very aware of the self and understanding of the internal processes. Slowly coming out of this after this beautiful stretch. And here we're going to lay down onto the back. Pull the belly in. Hug your knees into the chest. Rocking side to side. And through all this yoga and breathing practices, we we become more in tune with the universal force. More connected to, to our own soul because the ego, ego <laughs> sometimes veils the voice of the soul. That's why we pay attention to the heart. The heart is the physical manifestation or the physical translation of the soul. And the mind is the physical manifestation or the earthly manifestation of the spirit. We pay attention, we quiet down, we become present, we breathe, we accept more prana, we flow more energy, chi, and we're able to Take in more sunlight. So that the energies of the body flow and the energies of the mind flow. All right, let's grab the outer edges of the feet, rocking side to side here, happy baby. What better <laughs> pose? Force is no affective disorder than happy baby. You can also go goo goo gaga, goo goo gaga. <laughs> I am, um, when my baby was very little, she was literally like two, three months, she would only do happy baby when she was truly happy and satisfied and just free of afflictions, no tummy ache, just happy. Um, so that is, this pose is a, a blueprint in our body. It is imprinted in our body. It exists in the body. You don't have to learn it from a teacher from outside. It's already in. It's a blueprint. It's already in your body, your physicality, your tissues, know this pose. And even though babies do it when they're happy, we can go the other way around. We can do it. And that reminds us to be happy. It awakens happiness in us. Let's smile big now, because that's also the same thing, it goes both ways. Smiling can make us happy. 
And when we're happy, we smile. Everything goes both ways. Big smile. Smile at yourself. Smile at life. Smile at the sun. Smile at the moon. Smile for no reason at all. Great. From here, we're gonna release the legs and go into bridge pose. Feet are parallel to each other. Wiggle the shoulders so that the chest opens and the chest touches the chin maybe if you can. You can deepen it into wheel one more time. And lower down. Plow pose. Shoulders tend. Keep your legs close to you and slowly lower down. Hands underneath the body, lower the legs down. All the way to the floor. Nice deep breaths. Laying here, feeling the body, feeling the floor underneath you, I'm becoming really immersed in the present moment, really present. Right knee into the chest, supine twist. Both shoulders are on the floor, look away from your knee. opposite side coming out of this we're gonna go for fish lion pose, so elbows on the ground, top of the head on the ground. We're gonna stick the tongue out and roar. So just let a sound out. If you can, of course, if um, your space is free of uh, people and you don't, you're not keeping quiet, otherwise you just make an internal roar sound, but I encourage you to actually create sound, it's really important. So inhale, stick the tongue out and ah! All right, pretty much, just that's the, the gist of it. Two more times. And if we're in a room together, we should create a really loud sound. All right, I gave it my best. Lower down, let your feet drop to the side. Palms of the hands facing up, the hips are relaxing, the belly is relaxing, the jaw is softening. Here we're going to be cultivating an inner smile and also an external smile. Corners of the lips are smiling throughout the course of Shavasana. And we're smiling at everything around us. 
starting with our family, our close ones, friends, animals in our life, and plants in our life, crystals in our life, anything conscious or whatever in our life, uh, sentient or non-sentient, and then we'll extend this into people we don't like, co-workers maybe, um, maybe even enemies, not only everyone, present or not present, and just smiling, carefree here, we're carefree, we're just focusing on the ease of things, on the ease of life, on the flow of life, on the beauty of life. And the breath becomes easy. And the flow of energy, of chi, becomes easy, effortless, fluid. Stay here for as long as you need to. Smiling, continue smiling. And I'll see you on the mat next. Namaste.